Hi, I'm Dr. Chad Larson. Thanks for joining me in another episode of Keep It Real. Today we're going to talk about a condition that people are uh, justifiably very fearful of, and that's Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease, as most people know, um, causes a form of dementia where it affects the, the person's uh, basic levels of cognition and memory and could affect really all aspects of their physiology and pretty much every organ system in the body because the brain controls everything. So if the brain's not functioning properly, then everything below the brain level is going to be affected. And uh, we're going to talk about some studies, some new studies on different ways to uh, address Alzheimer's disease and the underlying causes of, of Alzheimer's disease and dementia. There's an interesting uh, article that was recently published in uh, a journal called uh, FASEB, which is the uh, Federation of American Societies for uh, Experimental Biology. And in this journal, the researchers wanted to figure out how they can uh, help the brain get rid of toxic waste. And one of these toxic wastes that build up in the brain is called amyloid beta. And this amyloid beta is formed when there's malfunction in the neurons. And so what happens is this happens all the way down at the, at the cellular level. When neurological tissue, when neurons get uh, inflamed and damaged and oxidated, in other words, an oxidative process starts to damage the neurons, it changes the protein structure of those neurons. And in physiology, we talk about uh, structure determines function. And so when you alter the structure of these proteins, it's going to alter their function. And so when you get these structures that are uh, developing abnormally, then these protein structures start to misfold. And protein misfolding is not good at the brain level. When these proteins misfold, they start to um, aggregate. And when you get this protein aggregation, then certain things are gonna form called amyloid beta plaques. And you get too many of these plaques and the brain starts to atrophy and then you're on the fast track to dementia and Alzheimer's disease. So there is a sewage system in the brain called the glymphatic system. Below the brain level, we have a system called the lymphatic system and that's when you get like swollen tonsils or you get swollen lymph nodes and it's usually when you're sick and this is kind of the sewage system of your immune system and it's trying to get rid of, of um, toxic material from your illness and your body's trying to get rid of it through the lymphatic sewage system but at the brain level it's called the glymphatic system so researchers, researchers thought if they could improve the clearing of this toxic waste that builds up in the brain, then they can maybe help to decrease um, progression of Alzheimer's. So they set out to figure out what kind of things might help to improve the function of this glymphatic system. And what they studied was um, omega-3 fish oils. And just to make a long story short, what they found out is that omega-3 fish oils that you've probably all heard about helps to pretty dramatically improve the function of the glymphatic system and it helps to increase the disposal of these waste products this uh, amyloid beta so if you could help to get rid of amyloid beta in the brain then that'll help to decrease inflammation that'll help to decrease uh, dysfunction of the brain and it'll help to decrease the chance that the brain's gonna atrophy. And if you can prevent the brain from atrophying, then you could truly prevent the onset and progression of Alzheimer's and uh, dementia. So um, that's one sort of therapeutic opportunity with, uh, with, for Alzheimer's disease. Another one, a study was published um, earlier this year in, uh, in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. And 
A condition is a really serious condition if, it's, if it has its own journal, like the Journal of Diabetes or the Journal of Heart Disease. So the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease publishes some really important information on the latest cutting research in Alzheimer's disease. And what they figured out in this study is the importance of homocysteine. Homocysteine, you need to put homocysteine on your list of markers that you want your doctor to test. Um, homocysteine can be tested by any of your basic labs that, uh, that run your, your blood work. And homocysteine should be tested for everybody because it's so key to so many different uh, levels of function in the human body. And what we know is that homocysteine for the brain, homocysteine is uh, maintaining certain homocysteine levels is important for a very long list of physiological functions. But we know at the brain level, it helps with phospholipid metabolism. Your brain is almost all phospholipids. It's a very, in, uh, very key component in your brain. And if there is uh, malfunction in this phospholipid metabolism, then again, that can put somebody at risk for uh, dementia and Alzheimer's. So um, it's really important to have your homocysteine evaluated just so you know what your level is. And then um, you can talk with your doctor um, about what, what you can do to help uh, optimize your levels of homocysteine. But here's the thing, is that the main thing that helps to balance your homocysteine is B vitamins. Very simple B vitamins, the main ones, uh, at least with regard to homocysteine, are uh, vitamin B12, folic acid, and vitamin B6. So homocysteine levels are, are completely dependent upon having optimal levels of B vitamins. So what they determined in this study is that um, optimal levels of B vitamins help to decrease the chance of brain atrophy and inflammation. That was in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. And um, also um, last year, there's an interesting study that was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association uh, Neurology Edition, so the JAMA Neurology Edition. And what they figured out in that study is the really crucial importance of maintaining proper vitamin D levels. What they notice is that people who have Alzheimer's and dementia have an insufficiency of vitamin D. And if you don't have enough vitamin D, that could lead to certain changes that happen in the brain that help to uh, progress dementia and Alzheimer's. So we talked about three very basic nutrients that you could, uh, you could investigate for your own body to see if you're deficient or insufficient of these, which is omega-3, um, your homocysteine and B vitamin levels, and your vitamin D. So uh, all these should be added to your list that your doctor should be checking on a regular basis because these are major therapeutic opportunities to help you decrease the chance of developing the very fearful condition. It's fearful because, uh, you know, most people have experience, and if you haven't, then you probably will soon with the rates of Alzheimer's disease that it's, uh, when a family member has this, it, it really affects the whole family, and it's a, it's a pretty horrible condition to watch a, a loved one uh, suffer from this condition. And it's progressive, and when, when it gets to a certain point, it's like a hard-boiled hard egg, you're not going back. But there's a certain therapeutic window where if we can determine what the um, underlying cause might be uh, from individual to individual as to you know, what is leading to their dementia and Alzheimer's disease, then um, if you hit it right early at that therapeutic window, then you could really help to reverse um, the dramatic effects of dementia. Um, one thing to consider is that Alzheimer's disease has somewhat of a genetic predisposition. And so if you have a family history of a grandparent or a parent that uh, has suffered from dementia and Alzheimer's disease, then you really need to pay attention to those nutrients and markers that you can test because you want to get at the, the sooner you can get at that, the better. 
And Alzheimer's disease is a complex condition that really um, warrants a very comprehensive um, evaluation and therapeutic workup. So we just talked about a few basic things, but um, they all matter. The more things that you can put together, the better. What we didn't really mention too much about is blood sugar metabolism. Um, uh, blood sugar metabolism is really, really key for the function of the brain. So I would just add that along with the list of things that you want to evaluate. So we talked about omega-3s, we talked about uh, homocysteine and B vitamin levels, and we talked about vitamin D. And I would also include some comprehensive markers for um, blood sugar metabolism. At the very least, what we should be measuring is uh, fasting glucose, fasting insulin, and hemoglobin A1C. I usually also add, uh, with my patients, fructosamine. Fructosamine is kind of an intermediate marker where glucose is a short-term uh, blood sugar evaluation. Um, hemoglobin A1C is like a 90-day evaluation of how your body's metabolizing glucose. And fructosamine chronologically is kind of in between several weeks of um, of an evaluation of blood sugar metabolism. So it's very important to have the short-term, mid-term, and long-term evaluation of what your blood sugar is doing because we know that um, Alzheimer's disease um, could be seriously influenced by blood sugar imbalances. So uh, that's just a little food for thought on uh, dementia and Alzheimer's disease, uh, some really current, uh, fresh off the press kind of research. So uh, I hope you learned something. Um, I hope to see you next time. And until then, keep it real.